Back here in HQ Spotlight, college football gave us an epic slate of games. In week 11, we had Ole Miss pulling off the upset over Georgia. Indiana still rolling, still undefeated, and LSU's CFP hopes could be completely done for. It's looking that way after they lose to Bama by double digits. But what does this mean for some of the top NFL draft prospects? Some of them are risers, fallers like Carson Beck. Um, we're going to talk about it. We have Mike Renner in the house. We're going to get to Carson Beck in just a moment. But let's talk about a different quarterback over in the Big Ten and Drew Allard. He is actually a quarterback on the rise for you, Mike. Tell us why. He's always been a guy with NFL tools. You know, he's right. got the size, 6'5", 240, big arm. But it was always kind of more tools than actual on-field performance. This year with Andy Kolnecki, the new offense coordinator there, his performance has shot through the roof. From a sub-60 completion percentage last year to over 70 this year, a sub-7 yards per attempt last year to over 9 this year. Just a much more efficient passer. And now I'm not sure he yet declares just yet, but this is the sort of trajectory that with his physical ability, he could end up a number one overall pick type of player someday. Still some bouts of inconsistency with his accuracy. He's been banged up this year, but I think he'll get to prove it on the biggest stage. You can see Penn State easy path now to the college football playoff. If he relates it up there, I don't think I'd put him out of the first round conversation just yet. Yeah, and this was a team, you know, Penn State in the offseason that when we looked at the schedule, a lot of folks had them surefire in the CFP and it's trending that way. Let's talk about um, Carson Beck. <laughs> Unfortunately, a different situation here. He is a faller and we know Taking care of the football has been a little bit of an issue. We saw a lot of turnovers. He has 12 interceptions over the last six games. Um, Wolf, we saw it against Florida. We saw it last week as well. Um, is there still enough time, Mike, for him to kind of do a bounce back and we're kind of wiping the slate clean of all the uh, interceptions that we've seen up until this point of the season? Not by next draft. Maybe for the one after that, <laughs> comes back for a year, plays better. But I, I think you're seeing what a lot of people worried about was that he had such a good situation last year at Georgia that what would it look like when he was a little bit overmatched, when he had to make plays on his own? And I think you saw in the Alabama game, and I think you saw in the Ole Miss game, what it looks like is a lot of picks. He has doubled his pick total from a year ago already, and we're not even obviously into the postseason here. So with Carson Beck, I think it's just a little too little too late, even if he does light it up as the season wears on, because you've seen him really go in the tank against some of the better competition, whether it's taking some bad sacks, whether it's putting the ball in harm's way a little too often. Carson Beck. I think he's come back to school at this point. Okay, so even if they get into the CFP and have a, a deep playoff run, you still think it might be too late based on what we've seen. I do. I okay. Do um, all right. Also, prior to the season, we talked a lot about Oklahoma State and and Ollie Gordon, and that and there was a, a lot of expectations for him. But unfortunately, what we've seen from him on the football field, he is also a faller for you, Mike. Yeah, a lot of people had him as either RB one or RB two with Ashton Genty, who we're talking about as a Heisman <laughs> yeah. candidate right now. And their seasons could not have gone differently to this point in time. His yards per carry has dropped by over two yards per carry. He had 31 explosive runs a year ago, only six this season. And now I know he's a product of some bad run blocking up front in that Oklahoma State offensive line. But if you're an NFL running back, you can overcome that or should be able to overcome that. So Ollie Gordon, with his lack of production this season, it's hard to see him in a crowded, crowded running back class because it's a really good class. It's hard to see him really anyone sticking their neck out with how he's played this season. Yeah, and it's funny because last season we didn't really talk a lot about running backs. It was a whole different conversation yes. in terms of that position, and now we're talking about that being a crowded position for this coming draft. Let's go back to the risers. We're going to Ohio State. We have Donovan Jackson. Based off of what you've seen, because I've seen a lot of draft profiles that are saying, you know, it's kind of hard to, to pinpoint him and give him a, a good comp and everything like that. Why does he fall into the riser category for you? To me, he's always kind of like we were talking about Drew Allen. This is a five-star offensive line recruit, a guy who always had the talent. It was just when are the technique and the technical <laughs> parts of the position going to catch up? And this year you've seen it. Now, he started off injured played four games at guard, and then when they switched him to left tackle, he was a fish out of water against Abdul Carter, who was a top five pick at Penn State. So don't watch the left tackle tape, but at guard, he has been, in my opinion, the best guard in the country this year. I don't think there's any surefire first-round interior offensive lineman, and it's a sort of weak class, so if anyone makes it into that mix, Donovan Jackson's my pick to do so. Okay, let's go to LSU because it's uh, clearly a tough week for them. It feels like their CFP hopes are are kind of few and far between yes. at this point. It's hard to imagine a three loss SEC team in the playoff. Um, but you have a couple of guys you want to talk about, unfortunately, in the uh, follower category. So who are they and, and why are they followers for you? Yeah, their season hasn't gone to plan because yeah. two of the guys that everyone had as first round type of players heading into the season, right tackle Emory Jones, off ball linebacker Harold Perkins, have not lived up to the hype. And now with Perkins, he tore his ACL four weeks into this season. But even before that, 
He had some issues with missed tackles, did not put on the weight a lot of people wanted him to, still looked like a safety playing off-ball linebacker when people loved him as a blitzer and what he could do as a pass rusher. So I think you'll see him likely come back to school after what he put on tape. And I think the same with Emory Jones. He's already allowed more pressures this season than he did all of last season when pass protection for Jaden Daniels. And that was kind of the worry, right, is that when you're pass protecting for Jaden Daniels, it's a little bit different than a pocket passer. Guys can't really rush the exact same way, and so I think we've seen that when guys are taking inside moves against them this season, he's really, really struggled, and I think his draft stock has cratered because of it. Yeah, uh, a tough week for LSU. Oregon, of course, a, a completely different situation. We're going to go to their defense. We're talking about Derek Harmon, and a lot of folks out there, uh, including our partners over at 24-7 Sports, calling him one of the most impactful transfers that they've seen um, anywhere this season. Yeah, do not be surprised if this guy goes a lot higher than what you've seen in first round mocks. I'm talking like top 10, top 15 type of player after he was really off a lot of radars after transferring from Michigan State to Oregon. This season, he has every single game showed up. I go back to that Ohio State game where he had one of the biggest plays in the game, taking it away from Quinshawn Judkins. He has the size to play anywhere up and down the line of scrimmage. He's 6'5", 310, long arms. Everyone's looking for that type of defensive tackle at the NFL level nowadays, the guy that can play the run, but then also penetrate into the backfield when need be. Derek Harmon playing his butt off this season. All right, Mike, we certainly appreciate it. Talking about NFL draft, draft prospects, excuse me, risers and fallers as we look ahead to the draft and we're right smack dab in the middle of college football season. You can also hear Mike on Pushing the Pile alongside Kyle Long. Um, Mike, what can folks expect on the pod today? Today we talked about Pete's power rankings. If you like what Pete <laughs> had to say, you'll love what he had to say about his team. Oh, boy. Okay, you can download, follow, listen wherever you get your pods or you can watch right now by scanning that QR code on your screen.